Trinity exposed, number 17. God died for sinners? Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You say, well, that's God the Son. Okay, where does it say God the Son? It doesn't. God the Father laid down his life. What's his life? Jesus Christ. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. But he is God, holy completely. And that includes the Father as the soul and the Holy Ghost as the Spirit. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now, if God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are three separate persons, do they all have blood? If so... How did God the Father shed his blood to pay for sins? You see the problem you get into? Oh, there are three, three separate persons. Okay, did they all have blood? So God the Father is eternal. He didn't, he didn't come down out of heaven or anything, so he doesn't technically have blood. Okay, then how does this verse work? You say, well, it's God the Son. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. You might want to drop this Trinity heresy because it's not founded in Scripture, and it's quite heretical, and I can say a whole lot of other things about it. It's a bad system. Drop it. 